Yay, it's live. Ti, 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 ti. Oh, Henrik, Christina, you're here. If you want to jump in the Zoom with me, you are more than welcome. Ramona is in the Zoom. Uh, let me find Kelly is here. Oh, that's great. I don't have to press buttons for people joining. <laughs> uh, awesome. Somebody under Galaxy S20 over the phone. Hi, I don't know who you are. If you can just type your name, if you can't speak, that's absolutely fine. So exciting. Oh my God. So I'm sorting out the last bit of the tech. And no, I don't want to present and record. I just want to present, thank you. Pra, 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 pra. Present. Just probably when I get out of this screen, then it will stop doing it. Felicia is here as well. Uh, right, so I find the invite link. That's it, copy invitation. And I find the Facebook group. Now I am a lot more prepared with all the tabs. So it was good last week that chat about barking dogs. Uh -huh. Yeah, when I could find so I drop it under this last post that I put up that it is starting in 10 minutes. Uh, the Zoom link is there or I can just t -t 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 -t. Oh, I can just simply put it in here. Hi, Sylvia, based. I just, I can delete it later. I'm just creating a post. It is hanging in the air, so it should come up. Yes, it is, it is coming up. So there is a link um, in the Facebook group if, if uh, somebody else wants to pop in for the zoom to be with to be with us and who i am hi julie i can see it on my ipad so many tabs <laughs> it's a tech wizard <laughs> learning everything <laughs> which button to press so so yes it is really exciting Spragan, what are you deciding to destroy now so that's the thing with the stuffy that once they realize that the energy is high and you're getting excited they become so mouthy oh my god that is this breed just wants to be mouthy there we go some scatter feeding i'm still waiting for the really tough um choose for her to come and just a last thing that hopefully this will connect to my laptop and not to the ipad or my phone uh no it didn't uh, it says nearby i want airport speakers can somebody say something in the zoom room and then i can hear that hello 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 hello, hello. <laughs> can you hear me yeah, okay, no point, no point using this one. It is not, not this one. So hopefully that it will be nice and calm and quiet in the household. So uh, I'm trying to keep an eye on the chat on the Facebook group as well. Uh, but welcome, everybody. And I'm so excited to do this. Uh, it is an absolutely awesome topic. And tonight we are going to have fun. So... Uh, Drop it in the chat uh, where you are from and what your dog's name or names if you have got uh, more than one dogs. So we are here today to learn and discuss more about loose leash walking with your dog and, and uh, make it as easy as possible on your walks without yanking them or using any correction or any harsh methods. So I'm really glad that 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 you're here because loose leash walking and pulling on the lead or just walking past other dogs and dogs having my down, it is just just such a such a huge topic. So we are going to dive 
into this one and I'm trying to wrap it up in 90 minutes as I promised it um, in the beginning. So, uh, so let's see. Oh, okay. Julie is the galaxy. <laughs> That's fine now that you put the camera on because it is, uh, I don't need to see the name that, yeah, I can see. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And Silva is from Canada. Uh, Julie is from the UK, not from not far from me, from Hampshire. Sprague and stop eating the food out from my pocket. Uh, Henrik is from Sweden. Welcome, Henrik, over here. You are very welcome. Celia is from Canada with Liam and Emma just love those two little dogs oh my god they are so funny and ramona from colorado oh my god i'm so happy to and when you said that you were coming i said yes <laughs> if if i'm not reaching out to you to connect with you then there is a way there is always a way so welcome and jane hi hi jane nice to see you and um, felicia is listening as well and and kelly's here so good to see you all and um let me oh beautiful felicia put the camera on hello gorgeous so now let's see how the tech is working how i set things up and i'm sharing my screen tell me that you can see a big fire yeah okay awesome so i'm taking the zoom thing away from me because i don't uh, it is not working I'm, uh, da, 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 hang on hang on a minute hang on pra, 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 pra. just a sec okay all right i can't slide here but that's absolutely fine absolutely okay so it was just the try hum jiggling between all the screens that are open that it is so my name's anita tokach who doesn't know me most of you do uh most of you i have met personally or just over zoom but it feels like that we met uh personally just doesn't really make any difference and it's such a such a weird world uh how really personal connections we can build up over zoom and, and doesn't matter which part of the world we we are from so so yes so i've jumped into dog training about five years ago i have had dogs all my life and uh and i really um really had a very uh, keen on learning. So my background is coming from teaching. I have been teaching for 25 years, um, economy and, and law students. I was a teacher of English uh, back in Hungary. And of course, that was a completely different situation because uh, uh, preparing students for state um, exams. So all these skills transferred into, into doc training. And I had, I can't even, count how many different breeds i had over the the more than 40 years uh mainly the most part of my life i was i was uh, dealing with big breeds uh caucasian shepherds german shepherds canacorzos so all the the livestock and and uh guard dog types uh but i had the the little fun ones i had shih tzus and and yorkie and papillons so i had all over the different scale and uh and my absolute heart dog apart from this crazy one that i have now my Steffi, uh was an irish setter so so i even went to the gun gun dog um type of dogs and and he was just the most most amazing amazing dog so and and i invested in my education a, a lot and i take a uh, big pride of uh of being members of different organizations they are all force free um 
and uh, I haven't put in all the ongoing courses that I am taking. So I'm studying towards my level four uh, behaviorist course because I just love, not because I love studying, but I just love to learn what is going on under the behaviors uh, of the dog. And, and it is fun to teach a trick, a spin, a twist, uh, uh, walking backwards. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, I started with a very uh, anxious puppy. And, and there are some of my friends over here who, who have known Spragan from the very beginning, that she was an extremely challenging, extremely anxious, hyperactive uh pup with uh with level three bite and uh level three four and uh and uh she she was she was tending towards very aggressive not very aggressive tendencies but her hyper hyperactivity and and her her high drive just simply uh went over the top so that uh, made me jump into learning more about behaviors and and what is causing the behaviors that the dogs are um, displaying because it's just not only enough to know that the dog is pulling but there is a lot that is going uh, underneath. So that's about me and my finger is now full of slobbery. <laughs> so. So what are we talking about today? So these are the questions that, that we are going to go through. So what does loosely short walking look like? Because uh, whoever uh, I ask, um, we all have different pictures in our head, what loosely short walking means for us and why it is important to you personally. What uh, is the importance in your own life? life? why dogs pull on leash we are going into generally and uh and then we can jump into it that what how it looks like in in your in your life with your dog if it is happening uh what is behind the pulling so what is the 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 emotion what is the behavior what is what is um the underlying factor how to change uh how can we read the body language because dogs do, don't speak english but they do communicate <laughs> and and they tell us a lot with their ears their eyes their, their body posture even their fur is telling us a lot how can we assess the environment what equipment uh are beneficial or can help us during our walks um and leash handling skills which we can talk through it is more practical stuff but there are there are things that we can mention here uh what are your dog scandals or triggers and what are the pattern games what what training can be put into place so we are going to talk about some practical stuff as well and 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 of course how how i can help so so yes at the end uh end of this uh, presentation at end of I don't really want it to, to be a presentation but end of this workshop uh, I will let you know that how we can work together what is the future working together be like if not that is absolutely okay and absolutely fine because this will be value packed and I'm sending out a guide a 22 pages guide so it's not just a three pages uh, pdf a 22 pages guide with a uh, really detailed uh, description of all the games, all the exercises that that we are going to talk through. Or if we ha if I haven't got time to talk through, then you can still read it. If you don't understand something, please reach out because just simply asking for support that doesn't cost any money. So, and I'm I absolutely love what I, what I'm doing, and uh, so so yeah. So that's that's why we are here, and. So oh, please drop it in the chat that what does loose leash walking look like for you? What, what does it mean? What you would like to uh, achieve with loose leash walking? Why is it important? You 
because it is different for every person depending on where you live what kind of dog you have it looks completely different with my staffy com looks completely different with my toy poodle and it did look completely different with my uh german shepherds or my my caucasians which was the obedience type of um healing and they were they were just offering that even without the leash because that's that's how they <laughs> they were walking <laughs> And then it wasn't because I'd raised them up in a military way, but they were raised up in a, in a, in a different, different way. So let's, oh, where did my Zoom go? That's, <laughs> hang on, hang on. I'm trying to find where I am. That's what i'm afraid oh my god all the tabs are open and just the one is not that uh is i need i stop sharing i can't find it that's the way that's the way forward i get to stop sharing so nothing is in the chat so what is loose leash walking look like for you? You can unmute and just, just tell me. I'm, uh, I'm back in a second. Right, I'm back here. I just asked my son to stop the tap running because i can't put my headphones in it's just not connecting to the laptop for some reason today so what does loose leash walking anybody wants to share it says typing just you can speak up if it's like it's in the chat sorry thanks there thanks yeah 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 that's me and and the tag uh, my screen is just too small right so the lead is not going tight not pulling me uh henrik uh between pulling the leash and reactivity well it's just that when when we are talking about loose leash walking or, or when you want to achieve loose leash walking with your dogs then how how it looks like what is the picture that you are having in your because jane is saying that it is just not going tight so according to jane it doesn't really matter that the dog is and just correct me jane if it is not right it doesn't matter that the dog is in front of you or behind you but it just doesn't uh charlie is here i didn't notice hello charlie uh charlie says that is, the dog is not pulling me so if the dog is not pulling me then it's again it's it's relaxed ramona is saying to have a nice walk together with my dogs exploring more than arguing and pulling yes no pulling casual walking uh pam hello pam sorry didn't realize that you were here too nice to see you here loose leash but walking quietly by my side so there we go so for pam it is by my side so that's why i'm saying that that we are talking about loose leash walking and everybody has got a bit of a different picture uh that what what it looks like and okay i can see amanda <laughs> and uh with some of my dogs it doesn't really matter whether they go be behind me or next to me or in front of me if it is a big dog that you have got if you have got a big breed do you mind if the dog is going in front of you behind you or next to you just next um you are muted <laughs> Um, next to me next to me yes thank you yes exactly so with the bit the bit again is rearranging the table uh, 
So with big dogs, uh, yes, absolutely. I prefer, again, get off. With big dogs, absolutely, I prefer having them, them next to me rather than in front of me or behind me. With a tiny little dog, like my toy poodle or the papillon or the, the shih tzus I had or the Yorkshire terriers. Again, where, where do you want the tiny dogs? Especially if, if you live in an area like Ramon, Ramona and... Uh, and and Sylvia, Sylvia was it done in Florida, and there were bears, and and her dogs are tiny. Uh, Ramona, I don't know what. Do you have coyotes in your area? Coyotes, deer. Mm -hmm. Sometimes yeah. a mountain lion. Is, there we go, mountain lion, coyotes. So, so and we are walking just a tiny little dog. Then, then definitely, I want the dog to to go either in front of me or again next to me by my side, and uh, want to know where exactly they are because I I get to protect them. Or if you live in a in a city where where there is huge traffic, um, I I just simply like if my dog walked on the pavement. Uh, on the opposite side where the traffic was going. So I was walking on the side next to the, next to the road and the dog was walking by my side. Again, it doesn't really matter for me, really. Uh, also, don't want to be tripped. Exactly. That's a very good point, Sylvia, with, with the small dogs. Yes, with Newton. Oh, my God. That little dog, um, my toy poodle, he had the habit that just simply put himself into heel and. And because he was that tiny, I just always had to watch where the dog is because I just didn't want to trip over him. <laughs> it was it was he was just so funny. So so yes, so absolutely. These are uh, these are the things that um, we get to. I'm going back to sharing the screen. Uh, get to think about and and. Uh, about what loose leash walking is and then the next question is what is the walk for so when we are taking going out with our dogs what is the walk for <laughs> and there are some tips or jobs, just some collection of, of thoughts on the screen in front of you, like uh, like it can be sniffing or, or an exploring um, thing, or I can't move things on my screen. Spragan, my hand is really, there we go. So, so whether we are going out for an exercise or an or an it's just a calming, uh, no stress, a stress free, uh, enjoyable walk for the both of us, or or I'm taking out my dog because I want to exercise them, or i'm exercising and i'm just having the dog next to me and and uh and the dog can have some some exercise so again there are different factors that what is the purpose of the walk where the walk will take place and uh and your dog size and and the other factors that we want to know is is what kind of neighbor or, or we we get to take in, into consideration that what kind of neighborhood we live in like is it a single um, story homes or or apartment complex or or busy city or it's out in the country like uh ramona lives in a huge massive farm with uh, i don't know how many acres of field and horses in a beautiful environment so so of course loose walking over there is not uh the main thing but when they are taking the dog with them then then of course the dog has to change because the environment is changing so so we, when we are talking about loose leash walking, then uh, then we just have to think about it. What is the criteria? What is our criteria for for loose leash walking? What we have been teaching to the dog? What the dog? What is the learning experience? And 
And what is your preference? Uh, say that you can be consistent uh, from that, from the very start uh, of your walk and and also you can pass on all these instructions to everybody uh, who, who walks the dog. Um, so yes, let me stop mugging me. Seriously, I use my hand. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lee. Um, I know I stopped sharing because that's when I can't see anything and there is new things in the chat. Okay, <laughs> I'm getting on top of it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so Henrik says that uh, it may be dangerous here in Sweden to walk with the dog in other places than in front of you. We have very hostile and dangerous cyclists. Yes, so so exactly. It is very important to to... Uh, know your environment and then we are sw switching to the next question Sylvia says sniffing enrichment and exercise Ramona says exercising Henrik says exploring the um, environment together with the dogs uh, Sylvia I like to walk in nature areas instead of my neighborhood uh, Manda says I like to walk my dogs in different environments but feel more happy in the country yes I share that Absolutely, I live. I live in Bournemouth, uh, which is uh, which. Can, it can be quite busy, and and I'm really lucky because I have got access to the sea. I have got access to the new forest, so we can do beach walks. Uh, beach walks can be they, they, that they, the beach walks can be uh, the most um, not annoy frustrating sort of environment and that's what i i see in the local groups that people are oh somebody's running into my dog's face yes it is happening we can't control what other people are doing we can only control what we are doing with our dogs and and what is in our own control and these are the things that we are going through uh today that, that yeah we just get to choose the environment i love the beach but then i choose not to take my dogs when when it is very busy or go to the beach when it is not busy in the winter for example uh but absolutely share that uh i love going to the city and i started using it but just um my reason for going into this into the city is completely different from when we are going to the new forest for example going for the new forest is a lovely decompression for both of us and it's it's we are playing some really fun sand games that is moving uh the cogs in the brain as well for the dog or just simply just chill chill out uh when we go to the city it is more about her uh social skills and uh and and it's like a, a training walk which is now again quite chilled when it was really frustrating i was i wasn't doing it I, that environment just wasn't wasn't fine for my stuffy it was absolutely fine for my toy pudo so so that's that's how we get to measure that what is the walk for which dog is suitable for that where are our skills uh our hand on skills are at what level get off the laptop spragon before because i'm struggling with it anyway to sort out these buttons Okay, and um, yeah, so so how to make it the least stressful for for both of us and make it enjoyable because that's the main thing to make it enjoyable and back to sharing. So, can you see the next slide now? Uh, yeah, it is. Okay, changing. Why is your dog's walk important to you? So that's what we have just been discussing, that it can exercise enrichment, bonding, socialization, just taking them out for a short toilet break, or we want to go out with, 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 a, with a family. So whose walk is it, really? So is it is it for us? Is it for the dog? And, and what we are expecting um, with from our dog? So, why do dogs pull on the leash? And there we are, as you can see in the description, there are just so many different motivation or motivators 
why dogs are pulling uh, on, on the leash. It can be because they are frustrated. They are afraid of something uh, or it just simply that's how they have been doing for it's a learned behavior and it works. They are pulling on the lead and we are just OK, we are just following it because it's easier to follow them than to go into a fight all the time. Or it can be over excitement with a lot of adolescent dogs that is the case uh and and even even later um then sometimes they are pulling because they want more distance and they want to get away sometimes they want to go closer sometimes they want to move away and and create distance and sometimes they are pulling just because it feels good and just because they are full of energy and and they just want to want to want to get going so let's have a look at the two videos i start with this one and let's see why this dog is pulling this beautiful doodle and lunging okay it's just a really short one let's play it once more and drop it in the chat what you can see. Bang, bang. And then the second video. This gorgeous shepherd. Just for the sake of the video, the dog wasn't really made frightened. It's 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 a <laughs> <laughs> a mock-up situation but but you can see what the situation is so just just for the sake of videoing uh couldn't capture a situation when actually it is happening it's difficult to video situations when they are happening because we are so involved in what what is happening with the dog and with us that it's very difficult to to video those things uh so this situation was made up i play it once more uh and you can see the details and i stopped sharing because i can't see the comments henrik likes my dog okay you can have her <laughs> she is on the go she would stop if i had that big bark cow bark then she would be chewing now happily with the cow she and and even with with a, if i give her a kong she just does it in 10 minutes and that's it so so yes it is my energy level that is um so the, the verse is very excited and the other is happy to greet someone that's <laughs> henrik lovely observation skills yes that dog is definitely not not a scared dog so <laughs> what it wanted to represent if they if you noticed pra, 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 let me uh, this one so in the car at the back the sirens went the, the alarm went off and and the dog got scared so in this case yes exactly the dog wants to go towards it's pulling on the lead because wants to go towards the other dog to meet the other dog and in this case the dog is creating distance from away from the noise that they are scared of so so pulling on the lead can have completely different um completely different reasons behind it so so yeah uh pra, pra, pra. let's move on to the next slide no i can't there we go so be, what is behind the pulling so it is the pulling itself is just the tip of the iceberg and i absolutely love this this picture uh i'm sure you have already seen this picture that that uh probably on business slides um that what is what can be seen on the surface is like 10 percent of what actually is underneath the surface and that's where we we get to dig uh into that why why is that pulling happening because 
it can say that yeah the dog has never learned but what if the dog has already learned it what are you doing young lady uh if we have already taught that dog the behavior and they know the behavior and then they are still pulling then there is something that is going on with the dog and that's where we get to to put up our magnifying glass and and look into the dog's body language what the dog is communicating with us look into the environment and we will look into the different factors that that we get to take into consideration so excuse me so it can be a lack of experience can be relying on tools over training so when when uh, it, it does happen when people are using tools on dogs and then they take off the tools that actually turns out that you no know, the dog didn't learn anything because the pulling still taking place or just the senses are overstimulated and the dog is just not coping in that that uh, that environment uh, they haven't got their thinking head on at all adolescence that's a typical typical thing in adolescence and i'm not saying that adolescent dogs will grow out of it because obviously they they get to learn the skills um but they uh regulate their uh excitement level um they, they need to learn so much and their brain is still developing they need to learn how to regulate their excitement 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 levels that their, their high emotions um and and you can see all the different reasons like breed specific movements um fear and and uh frustration and whether there is a medical issue um uh, underlying or or what what is going on on with with the dog uh, with the breed specific movements what i'm i'm thinking about is like like the collies with the the herding stop and stop and move and stop other things from moving in the in the environment um and just being over sensitive towards whatever is going on in the environment if if we are going to like last summer uh, i went to um dog festival with my dog and i was totally scared that oh my god this is an experience with over three thousand dogs in there and and uh and over ten thousand people and uh i went there because my dog was um doing a gig there and even the previous day yes you even the previous day i was thinking about it that no i'm pulling out my dog is is it's just not the right environment for my dog and she will be overstimulated and 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 then then i thought about it that no we've got it and and uh, i taught her everything i couldn't teach her in the in the situation because i have never been with her with uh, around that many dogs and and that many people but i taught her all the skills that she needed to to be able to disengage to be able to be confident around uh movements to to be able to be okay with moving away from dogs be able to focus on me and and focus on the task in front of her so she was working in a in a, a fenced uh, area yes she's here now again uh she was working in a fenced area uh doing some scent work demoing some scent work and once she was on task she didn't mind because she could have easily just jumped the the fence because the fence was even lower than this table and you can see that she can jump really high so, so height is not not really an issue for her so so she had all the skills uh and and that's what we get to to teach with the loose leash walking as well we get to prepare our dogs for for all the skills that they need so if you are moving my hand i can't move the screen thank you uh, this is the one Do, 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 do. so that's where we are going into the nitty gritty and and we are going to each of these and i'm going to talk about each of these a little bit so hi what time sorry sorry there we go 
So we are going to talk about discovering your dog's candles or the triggers uh, and how can we get prepared and, and how can we learn that what the triggers are that is provoking your dog. Uh, talking about changing association that a dog in fear is only look for safety and, and they will struggle to learn. So if they are not in the good headspace, then there is nothing we can do. It's just, we just get to dodge out of that situation as quickly as we can, because it, it is not good for anybody. If we are not in the right headspace, then, then, then nothing, nothing will happen. Then socialization and exposure from excited to neutral to to teach them all the different sounds and sights and sounds, smells whatever is going around in the environment and and obviously we can't teach them all the different situations but there are ways how we can get them ready for for the changes in the environment how we can shape the brain that that the brain is ready to take in all the information with ease then we get to teach the walking position uh that and the walking position again that's how we started that where you want your dog to be so it is absolutely up to you uh there's nothing wrong walking them on the right or on the left or in front of you or behind you it's just you get to decide that what is the favorable what is the preferable uh position where you want your dog to walk and then you just get to reinforce it um then we will talk about body language why it is important uh the environment which is a huge part of the picture and uh, then how to bail out and just create space because if the dog is not in the right head space then uh just any unpredictable can happen because the dog can over direct um to to somebody else and they are already in high arousal so that's when accidents can or incidents can easily happen. And the nice thing in this one is that we don't have to change everything. Sometimes it's enough if we just change one factor and, and that will change the whole picture for your walking or for your dog. So that's why discovering your dog's candles and we will talk about it in a minute. What what it what that one is um, is so important uh, because once we know what the triggers are, then we can look out and watch for the triggers before they are happening. Before the dog goes into that completely mind of state when they just gone, and we can't do anything with them, and uh, and preempt the worst from happening. So. The dog in the picture is uh, Sinatra, and uh, Sinatra is my mentor's do dog. Dog, um, his dog lives in the U.S., and and Sinatra's story is just absolutely uh, a beautiful example that just changing one thing, and and everything changes. So basically, what happened with this dog? Spragan, stop it! What happened with this dog? is um um this dog was taught basically all the all the basic behaviors all the fun this dog is only one year old and uh and and was in board and train and learned everything and loose leash walking the basic manners shake pull and spin and turn and and brilliant attention and focus and whenever he was out in the environment he was just a spinning complete mess and and had meltdowns and just couldn't cope with that so and and that was that was the environment the cars running the big city environment and the dog uh was taken by an other family the environment was a, a, a really nice rural environment quiet environment and that dog thrives and just after the fifth day this dog was completely loosely walking and uh, focused around whatever distraction other dogs were around and he just couldn't be bothered at all get out of my face thank you rude um 
couldn't bother at all just at which which is difficult for a one-year-old dog anyway because that's only an adolescent dog so that's why i'm saying that that all the behaviors all those manners were taught to this dog and just changing one thing changing the environment and all that teaching that came back straight away so sometimes the, uh, it's just we just get to make that decision that what is the best for this dog what is the right thing for this dog are we providing the right environment? So sometimes it, it's not us because we did everything we could our best in, in that specific environment. I'm not saying take your dog to a different environment, but but it, it is important to, to assess. Just like, as I said, with my example from with, with Spragum, that I had to assess that whether dog festival or with, with three th thousands and thousands of dogs and people around, uh, will she be in the right headspace to be able to focus on on the task in front of her and not go into a complete meltdown? Um, so, let's go back to share. It is I'm not going out saying loud that it is going now sleeker to change between um, between the tech. So, so yeah, so we are going to go into into details and into into these bullet points, uh, except a couple of them. But the, the all all the rest, whatever I'm not mentioning here, everything you will find in the guide in the guide that I'm I'm going to send out in the emails and um, uh, also. Um, We'll put it into into the Facebook group, so, you, so definitely you will get it. If if you can't download it or something, then just give me a shout, and it will land in your inbox. So I'm putting this dog into the kitchen now. She's jumping up and down. Just hang here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Go and have a drink. Right. let's next slide there we go that's an interesting one and i think i love this slide absolutely love this slide because this is uh this is giving clarity because we all know what the traffic lights are no matter where we are in the world yeah she's having a good drink of water uh so it is the the red the yellow and the green light that we use in the traffic so so if it is red we get to stop if it is uh yellow we get to wait and if it is green then it's green green and go so that's how our dogs are going into the green zone yellow zone and and red zone so what is the green green zone the green zone is when when it is all good and there is nothing wrong with the dog uh they are they are speaking they are uh providing us with the appropriate body language they are loose body language they are calm they are in a, in a good thinking space um the muscles are relaxed um uh, they are stopping to to gather some information and, and these stoppings are so important for the dogs to process what is going on in the environment and and just because they they stop and process if we start start nagging them and and pulling them away from things then then uh, we might disturb that um and they get what did you do spragan let's go back shall we thank you right no i'm not speeding it up so that is the the green zone and um uh, Uh, you might see some some um, lip licking that you will notice with your dog, and uh, it is not bad. Or a tongue flick when they lick lick their lips and, and lick their lick their nose, which is which is not a bad thing. It is a calming, uh, a self calming behavior. Uh, so it just says that yeah, 
okay, I can deal with that. And I'm absolutely, absolutely fine. We might see some yawning as well, which is still absolutely fine. The dog is still in control. Uh, they are trying to be less stimulated, but it's okay because they are able to calm their sums down. And that's what we, we get to teach them. Uh, and that's what they get to learn. That's where adolescents are, are lacking the skills yet uh, to be able to, to calm uh, themselves down. So shake-offs i absolutely love shake-offs and i and shake-offs and um because shake-off is is like a reset button when we are just resetting the the like taylor strips shake off shake it off off uh and it's really amazing thing um uh, and i always make a big deal when when my dog shakes it off that okay that was a good shake off i'm trying not to make funny noises not making it to making you even more excited so shake offs are good communication and then we are entering into the yellow zone so that is when your dog starts to raise their voice please don't smudge my glasses so it is not something that we get to be concerned about straight away, but it is just a sign, a warning sign. It's the amber. We are in the warning sign. There we go. We got the yawning here. That mm, trying to trying to become, and um, we just get to pay attention to our dogs really closely. So so just pop in in the comments that what signs are you seeing in your dogs when they are in the in the yellow zone because see the we see these signs on a daily basis so does your dog pace or um like use back and forth back and forth or do they stop and and stand with their tail high like we can call it as a flagpole tail when it's just boom it stays stiff rigid um so what 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 uh dog communication can you observe uh when your dog is raising their voice so just drop it in the chat and i found where i can chat, find the chat without getting out of the screen yes <laughs> um yeah, okay, so yeah, we yes, need to switch the, to laptop. That's absolutely fine. Excitement for Poodle, learn behavior with the GSD, yes. Um, that's for the previous uh, videos. I always reward shake-offs. Yes, me too. I would love to put it on cue. I couldn't yet. I couldn't. Because for some reason she's still not in the right um, learning headspace to to remember the word for that one. Excessive being, awesome, Ramona. Yes, stiffness, flagpole tail, pacing, weaving. Yeah, stiff movement. Yes, exactly. That's when the stiff movement, the jerky movements are coming into place <laughs> you can't cut it get it on cue either yeah i will hire a trainer to put the shake on cue it would be awesome because because the thing is that shake putting putting the shake on on cue is basically can only happen with capturing so when you see the dog you just reward good shake and reward the dog good shake and reward the dog and she learns really quickly but for some reason she's not in the good, good head space for that maybe it's it's a it's a common terrier thing, thing Sylvia I don't know um but with dogs that can learn the shake when you when you see that they are sort of in the ember zone they can still they still can think they are still in the thinking thinking head please don't come in my yes i love you too um, so they are still in the thinking head and you told them to shake and you ask them shake then just even they are not at the calming stage by just asking them and if the body is uh, presenting that behavior then it will send the brain the the good signals is just 
the same if we can teach the dogs breathing breathing there are exercises how we can teach breathing techniques to our dogs that's exactly the same what we are doing uh with with our breathing I, either the guided breathing meditation or, or just the, the breathing and taking a big breath breath and taking out or the box breathing or the different um breathing exercises t -t 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 what else is there maybe because they do a shake off they are yeah and that's that's what i would say exactly that she is still not in the in the right headspace she's she's so much she so much wants to calm herself down but she is still not and it's it's just a harder time she or she's just focusing too much on to herself and not what is coming in the environment but just focusing on herself that right i want to be good i want to be a really good dog here mommy and then you just can't learn you are not in that um not in that headspace so So yeah, so we are moving into oh yeah, before moving. So so basically in the uh the yellow zone, uh we are still at that place where things can move into up into the red zone, they can escalate or they can just simply de-escalate. And and the reason why it is important to to know what your uh dogs doing when they are in the in the amber zone, uh, because if we can inter interfere at that point and uh like we are going to talk about pattern games and and uh the mark and move uh then this is that that zone where we can still apply these games and and we can bring our dog down uh back to calmness or can just simply decide that right we are just leaving this situation because no learning is taking place but at, at this stage we can they can still listen to us they can still pay attention to us and uh yeah yellow zone and amber zone yes yes Henrik you see now I could switch to chat straight away I get I get out of here okay awesome um yeah so I paused. I did something. Don't know what. What did I do? I shouted it too early that I know what I'm doing. No, I don't. Uh, Chrome. Google Chrome. Here we go. Yeah. So you can still see what actually is happening. So yes, the amber zone is, and the yellow zone are absolutely exact, exactly the same so so that's when we can we have we have got and and in the guide you will get loads of exercises what actually we can do but i will uh mention them a bit later later so so yes yeah, so they are raising their voice all the hackles can um start going up and what is happening when we are entering into the red zone that this time the dog is not shouting the dog is yelling at you and yes it can be very embarrassing it's like when i don't know how many of you had children and had a tantrum in the supermarket when they just put themselves down on the ground and screaming and shouting and and all all their limbs were moving at the same time were screaming from the top of their head they are not moving until they can get that toy or chocolate or whatever in there done that with my older one and uh and that we can think about it that what is going on underneath whether they haven't had enough sleep or or they are hungry or thirsty or to try to find out what actually is going on and what is behind behind the shouting and uh with our dogs we can see that the the hackle starts going up it is an absolutely um unintentional thing with the dogs it's not that they decide that i'm going to put my hackles up it, it is just going naturally and it starts going on all over their spine starts at the neck and goes to the end of the spine uh to the bottom of their their um like a mohawk uh on the back and they tense up and uh flex out 
or some some dogs go into complete barking and spinning and lunging and 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 into into a complete mess and and they are just just saying that listen to me i want to say something and they just become as loud as 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 possible so so they forget their name that's what's what the owner said that oh my dog just completely forgets their name well they don't forget their name they are not in that headspace they can't they don't feel safe they can't um um process anymore what is going on and um and yes with some breeds the mouthing can be very strong at this time and they start biting uh their lead or or they can redirect their their biting and they can start biting the owner um hopefully there is nobody near there or or can go for other dogs easily as well so basically over here the only thing that we can do is is just keep safe and they are reacting because they want to survive and they want to keep themselves safe uh so just we get to know that they are and you are not physically in danger and uh so for example for us this situation happened when a fox jumped up in front of us and uh and, and foxes were a huge thing uh now when she when she sees the fox she can she can handle it a lot lot better so so we can train for this situation in that situation just turn away and and get get away as quickly as possible so we will go into into those exercises as well that how we can get out get out of the, of of this situation um as fast as we can so was this helpful this little summary and i don't know on my laptop where i am yes d -d 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 -d. no it's the wrong button sorry i will be back i know stop share and then i can see yes ramona julie and pam are still showing their faces thank you so was this was this helpful so far yes okay okay awesome really i need positive reinforcement as well thank you <laughs> we all like positive reinforcements <laughs> so let us uh, move on i nearly pressed the end button Ugh. right google chrome and share and the next slide so this is the huge one reading the environment because that's where all the things are happening and uh so it is very important to understand what is the environment saying to us so when we're talking about where are we walking our dogs that is what we are going to address right now so what are we choosing for our dog the experience to be like so looking for an environment that keeps um keeps our dogs in in the red in the red zone that just doesn't make sense so it's it's definitely not a choice that we want to make so as we are becoming more skilled and not only us but the dog as the dog becomes more skilled walking on a loose leash that's when we can start progress up on the ladder and as you can see there is a foundational level and the skill building the reliability the advanced the expert like ladder it goes up and it is not a balanced ladder so the steps uh, between the different levels are not exactly the same sometimes they have to to jump up and that was exactly the same thing when i was teaching english uh that the jump between the, the beginner to the intermediate level that was a lot less than uh jumping from min intermediate to advanced so the intermediate level is quite a wide uh wide level so the reliable level is quite a, quite quite a huge and, and actually once we are getting to that one that is a good uh level uh where our dogs can 
and we can happily have enjoyable things. So, so we are starting with the foundation. So what is the foundation? So this is where your dog feels most safe. So where they are allowed um, and, and they are okay to eat, uh, to sleep, and, and that is happening in the home. So you start your uh, start off your, your loose leash walking skills or teaching your loose leash walking skills to your dog at home. And, uh, and then we are, I'm going to talk about the, the teaching position uh, in a second as well. So then once you got the skills and you covered it with your dog at the home, then you can take it to the next level, which is a backyard or the front yard, where there are still only mild distractions. And um, they can still sm uh, smell the scent of the dog next door. So there are things happening. Even for us, it sounds like boring. It actually is not because they can hear the airplane going by or hear the, hear the traffic. Or, or hear the passerbys and, and can take in the different smells as well. And uh, when we, are, we can do reliably in, in that space, then we can branch out to, to other safer zone, which like three houses down to the neighborhood. And for many, many months, that's how far I could walk with my dog. And... and um, so many people ask me that, do, did I only teach her to walk on loose leash in a, on a harness? Yeah, she has been on a harness all her life. Now I can put, I did an experiment, I put a color on her and she can absolutely do it on, on a color as well. So it's not the equipment, it's the skills uh, and the environments, all these, all these factors that we, we get to take into consideration when, when we can decide that, yes, the dog not, knows the skills. And she can still pull. That's when I can assess that why is she pulling? What is happening in the in the uh, underneath? The environment is not right. She is not in the right headspace because too much was happening and too too excited. Uh, things were happening, and and she is just over threshold. So so sometimes it is just three that three houses down your neighborhood, and then you just very gradually start to. I know I'm playing with this food, start to extend um, the environment where you are, when you are taking as you are, as you are progressing. Um, and then you can uh, experiment with more advanced environments with mild distractions, but they are still in the distance. Uh, and uh, they are the distance that if it's in the yellow zone, that's when we are still okay. We, I would say that, that we are still okay because we need to push our dogs a little bit. Uh, but we need to keep them on the threshold or we need to how to gather them back to, to a lot calmer, calmer space. So this is what um, I mean by, by the, the different environment that um, what we get to take into consideration. So like, is there uh, a construction were going on which is which is really um um high voices uh, or 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 a storm is coming so so everything that is going on in the environment because uh for example with my very sensitive girl with my toy poodle it can't, it could be wind it could be rain it could be traffic it, it he is solid uh with my stuffy, I couldn't walk when there was wind. She could, she, she hated going out in the rain. And now it's absolutely fine. We can do do things in the rain. We can, we can. She is not bothered about the thunder. Sometimes when she is not in the right mental space, she will still bark and react to it. But then it's in. It only goes into the yellow zone, and she she calms down. So she just, oh, what is that? And then she calms down. So it is a lot of learning about your dog, and you are the best person for your dog because you can do, only do all these observations. Um, and also choosing the right equipment um, for, for your dog. Because every environment will trigger each individual dog in a, in a, in a different way. 
equipment. So we love using the Y-shaped harnesses. And yes, the simple flat color, but again, choose it for choose it the right one for your dog. Um, because if you put a very thin one, like for a German Shepherd, then it will put pressure on the neck, on the uh, on the thyroids, on the ears, the eyes, and and everything. I don't want to cut it up. Thank you. No. Uh, it's not only the equipment that we get to put into consideration, but there are uh, other things that um, important to set up both of us for success so like the pre-departure cues uh the exercises before going hand uh, hand out head out our mindset so it's not only the dog are we in the right mindset um have we got everything preparing the right leash the right harness and color because uh again if it's just a thin lead and and uh, uh our dog is is uh prone to to by the lead when they get excited or anxious then it will if it's a strong dog like a german shepherd then it's just ah, one snap and that that lead is gone uh so it's thinking about oh have we got the treat pouch have we got food with us have we got the dog with us have we got the book bag uh with us and and also we can think of uh putting a bandana on our dog that our dog is in training that please don't approach uh so that that can be something so so yes so there are a lot of things to take into into consideration and when they are pulling we definitely don't want to put the pressure on their neck uh not not on their throat uh anyway so that's why i'm advising the harness and people say that oh in the harness they will just only learn to to pull mm, yes and no not really, because we already start teaching them walking on the leash before we are putting any equipment. And first we get to start um, teaching them to learn the equipment that we are putting on. Because if they are not happy, if they are not happy to put on uh, the harness and, and I've got, um, I've, Felicia, like we, we were working uh, on Luna putting on the harness, weren't we? because that was that was a huge issue without going out and and she she is she is just such a little sensitive soul and like these are these are could be could be bothered these are already excited before whatever is happening so with these are it's a completely different situation it's working on bringing the uh, uh, the excitement down with luna it's upping it down that it's a happy thing to go out actually and then once they are they are out they are both happy it's just uh going through the threshold so so you know your dog best but i'm absolutely happy to talk um to try to assess that this is what is going on with my dog what what can I, what uh can we do yeah this is the right one so that's that's about uh all the other technical stuff it is important because have you got your house house keys uh because if you get anxious about something or angry about something or frustrated then all these um emotions will simply they will just travel down on the lead our dogs are are sentient beings and they they do feel our energy levels absolutely so so that's why it is it is uh really important to prepare not only the dog but preparing ourselves so if you just had a huge argument with your children or with your uh partner before taking the dog out then you are not in the right mindset that that uh taking the dog out if the dog uh starts already pulling and and being excited uh walking out of the door then before going out then then let's think about it how we can calm that dog down to, to uh, get into the right headspace because when the dog dashes out on the door in, in that headspace then all we get that the cat is running through and <laughs> straight away going into a shouty mess that we, we, we definitely don't want 
So, so that's why we get to uh, take everything into consideration. And, and this is the list. And, hey, you, please don't chew that. Thank you very much. My son left the door open and Spurgeon found the shoe. So, so it is, it is very important to taking everything into consideration. Um, right, let's see how this dog is going out. There we go. We can see a good shake. That's an other thing that you can do. Just place some scatter feed, some food, stopping the dog running out of the door. So these are how we can slow them down. Again, treating them in position just on, on, the, on the drive. We are not going anywhere. Uh, not heading out. So it's just breaking the dog's anticipation, what actually is, is happening. Doing a little feet up, just grounding them. Then we can watch out where they are anchored with their, with their uh, front paws. The two paws up is a really good uh, game when we are asking the dog to, to stand up on something. And we can use this uh, in any environment it's like a parkour game uh, on a tree trunk, uh, just to, because it anchors the dogs down. That just that's how they are built. They, once they put their paws up, it's just they are they are stopping there. And when you are feeding them in the mouth, then we can either turn them away from something that we notice in the environment that is happening, or um, we can just simply look around. That okay, are we safe? Can we go? So it is really important to slow those dogs down who are really busy and, and really uh, high drive and just, just want to go out either because they are excited or either because they are they are not feeling completely confident about something. So it can be either way of the scale. Just the thing is that, that it's very difficult to tell with the body language because the behaviors that the dog is displaying, it's exactly the same, whether they are nervous, whether they are excited. But the one thing is that we just get to bring bring that uh, rush, rush, rush out on the front door a bit down. So either playing on the other side of the door before even opening the door, or you can just simply um, ditch, ditch the completely the routine and mix things up that dressing the dog up as if we are going on the walk and that brings up the anticipation and the excitement level. And then leave the harness on the dog and just start playing games at home and just sit down and start watching the TV and just drip feed the dog. The dog will uh, go. You will get that face that what is happening right now. But the excitement level will will drop after some point. At at the beginning, you will you will get frustration. So uh frustration can kick in. Uh, and that's when uh, the field cones, the licky mats, uh, these things can help. So, and once you, you manage to get the dog in the right headspace to get out of the front door, that's when you can work on the other side of the door. That's still when the door opens and we put our feet out, uh, then uh, then it is not in the complete running dash. I know I've been there, done that, absolutely. Now it is just so nice to see that if I open the front door, the, the cat normally wants to come in and the dog and the cat, they just meet each other, just little nose to nose and they just pass each other and, and very calmly. And my dog turns around, she knows that I will have to close the front door. She can't go anywhere. So it can kick in with the the most stubborn uh, type of dogs. It's not not stubborn as it's the dog is not in the right, right headspace. But we can easily start labeling them, which is which is a dangerous thing if we are putting them into boxes because it's better to try to understand. And that's why I'm so grateful that you guys are here because, because that's that's what you want to hear, that what are the emotions underneath that behavior? What is motivating the dog? Right. Now there are just a few slides left. He, 
a share yes and asking for support that is that is again a great thing that that you are not you are not alone so you can ask a friend um or or your partner or somebody from the family to go out for the walk with you and uh and they can walk in front of you it, it is it is if you have got a reactive dog uh obviously so that's why i'm saying that it depends on what the reason is behind uh pulling on the lead but if it is reactivity then um then and the dog is triggered by uh by other dogs then then somebody can walk in front of you like a few meters in front of you and can warn you that oh a dog is coming then it gives you enough time to cross the road and go, go on to the other side and you know that the dog won't go into a meltdown or or whatever your triggers are so you exactly know what is happening so that's why it, it, it is it is nice to have somebody or or i heard somebody was um made flies flyers with their dogs uh uh, photo and and gave it to the neighbors that if it's, if you see us with this dog please give us space because my no dog is very nervous and it's very difficult for me so it just depends on on how creative you are or you can you can go out for the walk uh, before you, without your dog and just just go around and watch what is happening oh okay there is a dog in that window and and that is watching when other dogs passing by and starts barking there are lots of cats living here so then we can you can change the routine um or the route that you are taking with your dog and and making it more comfortable and more enjoyable uh for for both of you and here we are with the candles so so basically the candles are anything that triggers your dogs so these are the stressors um and it can be um any it can be an environment it can be a sound it can be a scent it can be something that is happening to the dog it can be another person it can be the squirrels uh it can be because the dogs are not comfortable uh in their equipment it can be because they are injured and they are in pain or they're just completely scared of that noise or whatever the situation is so we, we get to understand what is what is going on what is happening and if we think of this trigger that each trigger is a candle and one candle won't make the water boil but when your dog gets up in the morning and it's already windy then one candle is already on then a big thunder is coming for some dogs it like may may julie is here with may may uh for may may it is uh, the thunder is probably that julie you are more than welcome to drop it in the chat it's it's probably all the candles and it is already over overflowing so it depends on how big candle that trigger is putting with other dogs okay i can hear it but i'm not that triggered then they go out for a walk and then they see a cat buying another candle and then they go to an agility class which they absolutely love and and love running and, and meeting that dog and playing around with other dogs and that burns other candles so it is not only good things but uh bad things as well because you know there is there is the stress and there's the use stress so it is that it doesn't matter which type of stress it is all filling in our dog's bucket and um and that water will overboil and once that water starts boiling it is very difficult so just blowing out one candle the water will still be boiling and you can blow out so many candles the water still keeps boiling and even when it's not boiling it will be still very hot so it's a lot more difficult to bring that water down to bring the dog back under threshold and it takes them a lot of sleep and a lot of the escalation to to get those get the cortisol level back uh to to normal um some people say that it, it takes more than 72 hours it can take even longer uh so um 72 hours is is definitely long and even in that time if there are other things that are um 
um, contributing to the to the stress bucket or to other candles are lit then then it will just never empty the dog can just can't de-escalate can't decompress so that's why it is important because if we know our dog candles if a dog if you do know are the um, their triggers then then it's a lot easier to plan ahead and and get prepared we can't control everything but but we can control quite quite a lot of things and that how we can help them to to get prepared for things and avoid things so yes i know it's still not training uh but it is very a very important part of the picture because if they are not in the right headspace they won't be learning so we can't do the lane can't do and then they will go into the red zone bang straight away and and then we won't be able to do anything with them. So now at the training, I said, oh my God, we arrived here. Yes, we did. At last, we absolutely did. So, so what can we do? We were talking a lot about the training, the walking position. And, and there are so many different ways to teach the walking position. And uh, there are so many different good ways. And... And as I've already mentioned, that the best way to teach it at home and without the equipment at all, so not on the leash. So we want, so if we want to the talk, once you got that picture in your head that where you want your dog to walk, and yes, I know the middle picture and uh, the third picture, they are saying the dog is walking next to us and uh, by, by my heel. If that's your uh, favorite position, them by having any means that's absolutely fine then just reward the dog whenever they hit that position reward it it's like a um a catch machine straight away bang 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 rewarding because what and when we are rewarding a behavior that behavior will happen more often um with the last picture it is I will I will uh, talk about the the check-ins because that is so important. Again, when when we are taking our dogs for a walk, that we want them to to check in, but we don't want to walk them like this all the time because that just puts so much pressure again on their neck, and that is that is becoming painful. So check-in means check-in that the dog just walks completely naturally and casually, and then just checks back on us. So. So yeah, so without the leash, reward them in position. Once you've got that, that's when we can start building uh, in the focus for the dogs to focus on us and and uh, adding the turns and uh, the figure of eight and the third 300 pack. We've, uh, you've got all these uh, in the guide, completely detailed um, and uh if you don't understand something, how to do it, just drop it in the chat and then we can we can go through it. But these are, you get to understand them um, step by step to, to be able to play it with your dog. And, and there is no one game that will uh, help changing uh, the pulling on the lead. So there are just so many contributing factors and playing the games. <laughs> So, so yes, so these are all the uh, ways to teach your dog where you want them to walk. And the, but the bottom line is that, that as we talked at the very beginning, that teach them without the distraction, teach them without the leash, because sometimes the leash is the distraction. And then build the levels, start off in your backyard, your front yard, your neighborhood, go to the park, uh, away from, from the distractions. And, uh, and if your dog doesn't know loose leash walking yet, then you can, you can use a longer lead when, when there are times when your dog, you can't be bothered whether your dog is pulling or not pulling. Um, if you if you can't avoid going to to those areas but just remember the more the dog is practicing pulling the better they become at it so we went back to the very beginning and the very slides at the very beginning when i mentioned that they are pulling just because that's what they learned 
that's what they know that's what works for them so figure out where you need to be uh, where you can create the success and then from success to success you can progressively get into the more challenging uh environments so so then a figure of eight then the 300 pack then you can start adding the turns uh on all, all of the walking uh positions so the bottom line is reinforce your dog where you want them to be and um yeah and and not only that this awesome um guide that i'm I, I was talking about this 22 pages that i'm going to send out to everybody but also there is a workshop uh coming up that is really exciting uh and uh and in the workshop i'm, I'm going to able i'm going to be uh able to teach you all these specific games but um, i will talk about it a bit later i just wanted to add a little teaser so um next slide pattern games oh no how to bail out da, 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 da. pattern games yeah so it didn't mm. yes so the how to how to bail out there are more more games like the escape u turn uh escape using the treat magnet escape crossing the street mark and move away the pattern games so these are all in the guide uh written down i will show i can i can show the uh the booklet as well so the pattern games the pattern games are based on uh the book by leslie mcdavid and she is absolutely amazing she uh her expertise is how to get dogs into the right level into the thinking level the the anxious and and reactive dogs and uh the pattern games are working because it's a familiar structure it teaches a familiar structure to the dog and her book is contra unleashed so you can order it in amazon but i can put the book's name into the facebook group uh so contra control unleashed if you want to go a bit uh geeky and that describes the games as well but i'm i'm in in the workbook i'm collect i collected the main ones the most important ones that you can use straight away so it gives the dog a familiar structure they are very simple and rhythmic behaviors and and it is fun because the dog knows exactly what it is coming like the one two three treat which is just basically you say one two three and the dog is already dashing at you because they know that that the food is coming and it's very easy very simple to teach you just start pairing three food three food three food and two three food two three food two three food and then one to put the whole pattern together and then that the dog or the up and down that is when you want the dog to be in in one place because you need to you need to be stationary for some reason and when we are adding movement then we can um uh, de-escalate the stress within the dog with movement so uh but we need the dog to stay in one place because the situation is like that and then all the dog is the up and down up and down up and down up and now so we are letting them to do some movement but there is a rhythm they know what is happening and their focus is not vigilantly uh whatever is going on so you can uh stay while that the bus is uh passing by or truck or 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 whatever that that would catch their eye and they could go into a chase for example uh because we are turning the dog away and they are just focusing on the game so the ping pong two cookie scatter back feet and back up and treat and and so on so the pattern game are absolutely um brilliant so you will get this all in the guide so um this is the end and let's this is the recap so know what you want your walk to look like uh know what your purpose of your walk is what are some contributing factors to your dog's pulling what does it take to change your dog's pulling then reading what can we learn about uh, our dog's body language remember the red amber 
yellow and green lights? What are the equipment that, that we are taking um, and how are we handling the leash? What are our dog's candles? And then uh, we were talking about the pattern games. So I stop sharing and I would like to ask you to drop it in the chat that what, what is your takeaway? What is what is the most important thing that uh, that was that that stood out for you? What is uh, yeah? So if you could just share it, I was checking on my iPad because I can see what is happening in the Facebook. I wasn't. It's good that there are not that many comments there because I wasn't hosting it too well in that sense. So is there something new that you haven't heard before or there is there is a light bulb moment that you just realized with your dog so basically it is all it is not recorded it is not recorded just saying okay but it will be in the facebook group but it is not recorded I wanted to send out the recording. I didn't press the record button. So it is in the in the Facebook group and it will stay there for this reason. But I can't send out the recording. I can send out the guide. Um, and okay, I will I will hold another one and then I will record that one. So um where am I? Here. But let's see. The candle under the boiling water was very illustrative for Henry. Sylvia has to go to work. Bye bye. Love you. Uh, bicycles lights a couple of candles for for Spikey for Henrik. Uh, a couple type of toys for Liam lights a few candles. Yes. Any banging noise for Julie, whatever the level of banks. Uh, Julie, I put up, if you go back in the, uh, are you are you member of the Facebook group? Join my Facebook group if you are not. And uh, I put up a, a, about a 10 minute recording about how to break down the noise and, and uh, how to, you can try that one. I know that, that you have been, doing so much around noises and i will try i will try but i, I will say it, when we came out of lockdown she even started reacting to airplanes yeah yeah because it start, started to generate so, so that's that's why i'm that's why i'm saying that i know that you have tried so many different games and and with may may it is even with medication it's may may isn't it yeah yeah, uh, and and even with with medication, it is uh, it is you get to medicate her because it is that level of anxiety. It is uh, oh, yeah. so. Uh, but the la latest thing that I I've learned and that was really interesting, and I shared it in the group straight away. Um, that makes complete sense. Uh, just like when we are teaching a dog a new thing and we start breaking it down when we are shaping things and breaking into into things so we are not keeping the 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 big thing we are not having the eyes on the prize on the big thing but breaking it down and just moving closer to the result uh, we want to achieve that's the same with noises that if you can think of and 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 uh, writing it down that what sort of noise it has to be a low noise because a bang is a is a low noise it has to be uh a noise that that uh um comes with with resonance because if it's a noise then then it, it gives the resonance they can feel it in their body uh as well the shake um and and so on just break it down that what are the components and then just uh train for the component itself so train for the resonance for the movement when they when can she can she cope and there is vibration she feels vibration under her feet on her body um for example i've got a 
um nail trimmer trimmer nail, it's not yeah. a trimmer it's a nail dremel. a dremel and and that has got no noise but it is it vibrates so i can i i started it just putting to to her body um not even not even her feet now i can i can touch the foot as well so breaking it down then you shut the door like this one you bang the door that doesn't does she perk her head up or can she cope with that so yeah, yeah. so so then just a smaller bang then what is the that level of bang that she can she i'm not saying with anger oh. just bang the door i know it's tiny then we get it to go we get, yeah yeah we get be, to go back even tinier it could be in a field like yeah. we did hoopers with her and there were some bangs in a field that had to be a mile away but of course the wind carried the noise that was enough to set her off and she couldn't work and it, it's straight away with her it's not kind of a build-up with her as soon as she hears a noise that's it no. she goes no, oh, it, it's 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 not a build up with her because she already has got in 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 her own body, and and yeah. that can be people working in their gardens. It could be nail guns on a building site. Anything with her, bless her. Mm -hmm. if it's yeah. somebody dropping their keys. That's enough. If mm -hmm. Somebody drops their keys. But anyway, that's not about loosely walking. <laughs> it's not diverse. <laughs> No, but but when when this thing is happening, then that's the thing that uh, she can't do loosely walking, either. So well, actually, she would rather be on. If you're out, she would rather be on the lead next to you. I'm so lucky that she doesn't bolt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so that it is. Yes. Sometimes she will pull, but she that's because she wants to get back to the van because there's been a lorry that's banged in the road you know if we're in the park and you know how a lorry will go over a drain cover and bang yeah yeah, yeah. that 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 will set her off as well and things mm -hmm. like that but she will pull but i was just so lucky that she doesn't bolt because otherwise we'd, well for the last three weeks she's been on restricted exercise again because she's ripped her legs again so <laughs> but we know what, what time is with her toe oh my god oh. so yes so thank you thank you julie for sharing no worries uh, love love may may she is my don't tell the other one but may may is my favorite uh ramona says the iceberg slide lack of experience and senses overstimulated loves birds and running through a flock of crow crows crows how do you pronounce crows the blackbird crows crows and crown yeah it's <laughs> yeah so so yeah so exactly it is it makes sense why why the pulling will happen because there is just so many things are happening but we can have a have a chat about that absolutely can have a chat about it so yes i'm really glad to to hear that there were takeaways um bit and, and piece of information the guide will be uh really helpful i'm sure and and that will have a lot of information so I'm back to the slides and yeah so I am very proud to announce and invite you to the reactivity rehab program and I will come to the workshop in a minute because the workshop is part of it so with the reactivity rehab program when there is reactivity as well uh involved and i've got an adolescent program as well just for adolescents so if you have got an adolescent dog and and uh um different and not even anxiety but over stimulation and excitement issues then please give me a shout and let's have a chat so this is the 
my flagship program and that's that's why i want to show it to you because i'm very proud of it because so much information in there it is just incredible and that's why as you can see it is six months working together because with reactivity things are not happening it's, it it doesn't mean that i have to be there in your home for six months but you will learn a lot so what i'm offering and i have got a commitment to provide 12 weekly life coaching classes but not in an overwhelming way but the day i was thinking of that having three classes then have a break then have three classes then have a break and that span it out because it it will take your brain as well overwhelming plus putting everything into practice and and uh and practicing everything uh plus three private training session not group sessions private training sessions and i will talk about the group settings in a minute how that is happening which is field work and if you are away from me that doesn't matter because in zoom with especially when working with reactivity but with any type of thing i don't have to be there and uh and it is really brilliant to work on zoom because it is your mechanics and i can be the observer i can be your critique in a nice and nudgy way i can felicia you can say that absolutely it is working isn't it uh over zoom and and uh via the camera and yeah yeah exactly so so it it is absolutely working and uh and and we can build up really really nice communication but you are working with your dog and and i am just there to to help you to teach i i i know i am missing the cuddles with the dogs with each of the dogs but you can learn a lot more if you are doing it with your dog and not i'm showing it to you i can demo it with my dog um also there is included uh invitation to a completely separate group where where everything remains the why it is important because because it is nice to be together with uh with people who have got very similar issues to you where we can share ideas when we can we can be open and be open and vulnerable and the more we are giving the more we are getting uh out of it and and uh and it is confidential it is staying there there is over a 100 i didn't really count i could have put the exact number but over 100 videos of um just like it was with the public program very short videos uh with exactly loose leash not um, not only loose leash but leash handling skills uh short explanations that exactly shows uh what to do how to do there are hand script with the videos so very easy to digest to make the learning happen as easy as possible for you uh there is possibility for you to to enter your videos and show your videos to me or to group um how you feel feel uh confident uh in between the sessions and then i can be there uh helping you in between the coaching sessions so basically you've got me 24 7 for six months and this is the first time I'm offering this one and I'm sure that the price will go up and this price will not be offered at uh, at the same, this program won't be offered at the, at the same price uh, again. Um, and the special bonus offer is the three-day workshop that is included. And the three-day workshop is uh, just around loose dish walking which is two days happening online in a zoom setting and in your curriculum because there will be a, a online curriculum that you can keep you get to keep for for life and uh, of course the, the whole reactivity program you can you get to keep for life but the 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 loose leash walking is a separate course a separate program so basically it's two in one um and uh again the same videos that you have got in the guide but you get in a video format as well with exactly you can watch what is happening so two days coaching 
first day we are going through the theory second day we are going through the training itself where i can watch what you are doing or just we are talking through what to to um put into consideration and then you go away and practice all these tasks and then later at a later date we are coming back together and uh if you are local to me then we are meeting in, at a at park or at a secure tired field and uh and set i will set up stations and we can work groundwork uh with your dog if you are away from me then we do, do, do exactly the same just we are doing it on zoom don't forget don't forget wrong word don't worry about the technology that is something that it will sort itself out we can work that out that's absolutely fine so so basically it is two in one the three-day workshop is included in the price that you could see before so if you don't want to jump in that is absolutely okay as well please reach out if you have got any question please please reach uh wrong buttons please reach out so you can take a screenshot or you know where you can reach me you can send me a private message you can call me you can text me you can whatsapp me you can uh, reach me via email so i'm answering all of them messenger uh even if you just have got a question because if i can support you in any way then just just reach out and and we will find a way how we can we can work together or just you just need a nudge and you absolutely got it and uh just a call just to having a discussion that will cost you nothing and you might be on the on the right track with all the help that you have taken away today and that is happy days brilliant so uh unfortunately i didn't press the record button so i won't be able to send out uh the recording but it will stay up over here i will put this um master class in the guides so it will be very easy to access so you can always access it in the group as long as you are part of the group and i will um put out another other class again and then hopefully i won't forget to uh push the record button and i can send you out that recording so where is the uh, was i sharing it or not sharing it i'm not sharing anything am i no let um let me yeah right so take a screenshot of this screen with my details uh but as i said i you can reach me all over the place so you can reach me on the phone you can send me text message you can send me whatsapp you can uh reach me through the website you can reach me in the facebook you can reach me in messenger you can comment on on this video that please reach out to me so there are uh very easy to ways so this is a special bonus offer that is included in the reactivity um um big program so master mastering your loose leash walking which is a three-day workshop uh and that is included in the big uh program oh yeah i didn't mention that i'm i even dropped in how cool is that a 10 percent off any future booking any future booking with me with the code founder rr because this is basically and i'm going back now one more slide because i didn't share this one so so this is the the price for the six months program plus um so this is the investment because it is investing into yourself you will have all the videos all the video library all uh the coaching course everything will be uploaded uh i will be available 
uh, to you and all your peers, everybody is sharing exactly the same or similar uh, problems so we can learn a lot and take away a lot of learning from each other. We are there to, to help each other and support each other because it can be learned, it can be lonely. Um, so this is included and uh, and that's where you can reach me. So I would like to thank you very much for coming today. Any questions? And thank you for all the sharing. Thank you for staying here with me. And I absolutely loved having you. It was a joy. So give me a thumb up if you enjoyed yourself. Because <laughs> I thank you. Because as I said, I can do with Henrik. Thanks so oh, and love from Ramona. I can do with positive reinforcement. Thank you very much. So yeah, so if you have got any questions, just send me. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Amanda. Oh. And if you have got any questions that you don't want to ask me now or about anything, just reach out. You know where I am, and I'm happy to connect with every and each of you. Okay, so as always, okay, love you. Thank you. Love, love. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>